Okay, so continuing with our overview here and answering the question, what was life like during the medieval period? It's really hard to understate the impact and influence that the Christian church had on day-to-day -day life. The church was tasked with the important job of making sure that as many people as possible achieved religious salvation, which was hard considering that the bulk of the populace was illiterate, made even further difficult because, of course, during this time, the Bible had not been translated into common languages. It was still in Latin. So to help out, the church came up with the guiding precepts that today we refer to as the seven deadly sins. So when we take a look at them, we can see that they're familiar with a lot of people today, and for good reason. For example, pride, of course, is believing that you're better than your neighbor, which goes against, you know, biblical teachings. And pride can even take on the form that someone believes that him or herself is better than God. Then there's wrath. Wrath being extreme anger. And as, of course, we all know, when you lose your temper, you're really not yourself anymore. You, it's like there's a, a switch in your consciousness that is turned off. You start to do things that you normally wouldn't do. Then there's greed, avarice. Greed deals with not just, you know, having money, but greed is the love of money just for the sake of having it and hoarding it, right? This is when you want money beyond the benefits that money can have in improving your day-to-day -day life. Then envy. Envy will refer to, you know, being jealous of your neighbor's possessions, your neighbor's spouse, right? That has its roots, as many of these do, in biblical teachings, including the Ten Commandments. Then we have gluttony. Gluttony refers to not only overeating, but also drunkenness. Then there's sloth, being lazy. So sloth refers to not only being physically lazy, but also spiritually lazy. You don't want to forget your prayers, right? You don't want to forget doing charitable deeds and almsgiving. We want all this stuff to happen in our lives. And then we have lust. So lust is that form of love in the physical form that, in, that excludes, you know, the other aspects of love, such as friendship, right, and companionship, having a soulmate as we go through life, and all that you're concerned about is the physical nature of love. So the church came up with the seven deadly sins, which again, based on biblical principles, and taught the populace that if you avoid these and follow the Ten Commandments, right, and the Beatitudes, that things are going to turn out well for you. In addition, the church also provided a very rudimentary education. There's no such thing as public schooling for the third estate. Of course, if you were a noble, right, then you would pay for tutors. But for us commoners, there's really no such thing. But we would get what we could, thanks to the church. And also the church provided early health care as well. So now, these visuals here, some people would say, give kind of a stereotypical presentation of what life was like during the medieval period, that for, you know, folks living in the 21st century, we really have it good. There's no outbreaks of the bubonic plague, as we see to the left and to the right, that, of course, were combined with influenza, you know, the flu pandemics would spring out as well, as well as just, you know, ordinary diseases 
do we have vaccinations to pre prevent? There's no such thing during this time. Life was a very transient thing. You know, when the, the plague outbreaks would happen, people would die from the plague within, within days sometimes. This is also the time people get the flu and die. Scarlet fever, you know, typhoid, tuberculosis, all of these diseases just running rampant. So death became very common, became the forefront, and a lot of the minds during the medieval period. So as a result, people became more and more concerned with religious salvation and the afterlife as opposed to the current life. So then we can see on the right, of course, the, the gorgeous cathedrals were being built during this time in Europe with the wonderful stained glass and the architecture was really amazing with these gothic cathedrals and in the bottom right visual is a really cool picture here of a labyrinth hopefully you can see right the labyrinth here some people would say that it's a maze but it's not a maze what a maze is it's the design that there's with the puzzle that there's only one correct passage. The way that a labyrinth works, and these were this is actually in the forefront of the sanctuary of Gothic Cathedral. So what people would do is they would come to church early and they would walk in to the labyrinth here, and then you start to see how the labyrinth twists and turns on itself, right? You see that? I'm doing a terrible job with my pointer here. Right? It's just twisting and turning. Raise that. Okay. And you see it's twisting and turning. So what people would do is they'd come to church early and they would walk back and forth on the labyrinth and say their prayers and it would give them time to reflect on life that even though life has lots of twists and turns, and it seems like it's really difficult and long, if you stay on the path, right, if you stay on God's path, that you'll reach the end of the labyrinth and you'll receive, you know, then you'll reach salvation. You'll make it to heaven. So a lot of people refer to the medieval period as the age of faith because the Christian church during this time had an enormous impact on day-to-day -day life. Wow, and we're already getting close to the end of this lecture. So I promise in the next one, we should be able to wrap up our overview of the medieval period.